Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a short video where we're going to focus on some of the ways in which financial markets can impact on growth and development in lower and middle income countries. So quite a few exam questions are now asking, assess, examine the importance of financial markets for economic development. So here are some, uh, some key points. First of all, it's important to have a money market uh, in which people can borrow and save. Having a trusted banking system to promote household saving is important, particularly if you're familiar with the importance of the Howard Domar growth model and the solo growth model, the ways in which uh, the financial system can uh, transfer savings of households and businesses into productive investments. It's also important to have a, a payment system, a system of paying for goods and services to facilitate spending and also business growth and cash flow. A really good example of that, of course, is the M-Pesa M -Pesa system developed initially in Kenya, now widely used in large parts of East Africa, for example, which provides a mobile money payment system to facilitate uh, the buying and selling of goods and services. Some of you will have looked at microfinance, so you could bring that into any question on financial markets and development. Microfinance, initially pioneered by Professor Mohammed Yunus, who set up the Grenin Bank in Bangladesh, seeks to encourage local entrepreneurship, uh, small businesses in particular providing seed corn finance to, to women looking to set up local businesses. Uh, you could focus on the importance of insurance as a basic financial service to help, for example, to protect farmers and other extractive industry producers who might be vulnerable to external shocks affecting both their, their supply, their yield, and the prices they get for their output. It's crucial to have foreign currency exchange. It's important to have financial markets which allow businesses to get the payments, the credit they need to import in, uh, key materials and components, and also, of course, to sell goods and services overseas as they develop their capacity and capability. And crucially, you need capital markets. You need the markets for debt and equity in developing countries to allow governments and corporations to raise fresh debt and equity to help fund their expansion. So there are six examples of why financial markets are important for development. In some countries, the level of financialization, financial capacity is very low. In Singapore, 96% of females owned a bank account in 2017. That figure was over three quarters in China, over 70% in Africa and nearly two thirds in Brazil. But look further down the chart. In India, less than half of females have a bank account. In Mexico, less than 40%. And look further down, in Ethiopia, one of the fastest growing countries in the world, only one woman in five hold, held a bank account in 2017. And in Yemen and Turkmenistan, less than one female in 50 had a bank account. So the availability of basic financial services and the ability to save, highly limited in those countries, both in, I think, obviously by social norms, but also, of course, by very low per capita incomes. Another, on the other side, um, what we're seeing is a, a large number of governments in developing countries uh, using what's called the euro bond market. This chart shows African government borrowing using euro bonds. That's where they issue government debt, but the debt is denominated in euros rather than their own currency. And you can see there's a surge in euro bond debt in 2017, 2018, dipped a little bit, 2019, of course, we're only a little bit way through 2020. So the accumulation of euro bonds is a really interesting uh, sign of the times, uh, presumably because the euro is thought of as a more stable currency. But of course, there's a lot of risk, although the interest rate on those bonds might be fairly low. The risk is that your currency depreciates against the euro. There could be a currency crisis, in which case that debt is much harder to repay. Uh, one of the interesting features of emerging financial markets in the African continent is the rise of African stock exchanges. If you go back to 1990, uh, there were only five stock markets across the whole of the African continent. Well, now there are 20, something nearly 30 stock exchanges in Africa, including two regional ones. This is the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in South Africa. And South Africa appears top of 
the peer-reviewed rankings for financial market capability and capacity in 2019. So countries such as South Africa, Mauritius, Kenya, Namibia and Botswana, they are regarded as having relatively well-developed and relatively well-capitalised financial markets, capable, if you like, of contributing to the growth and development process. So those are good examples of countries with relatively sophisticated and deep um, financial markets, for example, with big pension funds and with um, sovereign bond listings and a wide range of financial products. On the other hand, uh, not every country covered by this survey, but countries such as Senegal, Cameroon and Ethiopia and Angola, uh, those countries are really interesting case studies, but they appear near the bottom of this ranking. Uh, financial markets are shallow, they lack depth, uh, fragmented, uh, there's a weak domestic investor capacity and essentially a country such as Ethiopia, although it's growing quickly, it doesn't really have that well-developed financial market infrastructure and that's probably going to be a barrier holding it back uh, in the years to come. I just wanted to give you five really good applied examples that you could perhaps include into your revision notes of countries that are trying to develop their capacity and capability in financial markets. So uh, last year, in 2019, the Seychelles issued the world's first sovereign blue bond. The blue bond is basically a financial bond developed to raise money for the sustainable marine and fisheries investment projects that uh, the Seychelles wants to um, put money into, in particular to protect their um, fishing industry, but also, of course, as a way of, of, of making their tourism sector more sustainable. Blue bonds. The Ivory Coast, uh, renowned for their exports of coffee and cocoa, they're developing an agricultural commodities exchange, uh, including the ability to, to trade forward, the, the forward price of, uh, of volatile commodity prices. Mauritius has launched an e-bond trading system for government bonds. Ethiopia has announced plans to launch a stock exchange in 2020. And Angola, another country with relatively limited stock market capabilities, they expect their first ever initial public offering, an IPO, following the privatisation of, of multiple state-owned enterprises. Here, Rwanda is a good example of a country which is trying to build financial market capacity and capability. The, uh, there's a recent tweet saying that the Rwandan Stock Exchange has now raised over a billion dollars in total trading since its establishment only eight years ago. So uh, the, the value of a stock market to a growing economy. And here's the FT reporting about the Seychelles uh, issuing, selling the world's first blue bond in so-called dolphin debt. Great example to use. What matters in the long run, I think, is developing the capacity and capability of financial systems in developing and emerging countries in part because they become less reliant on foreign investment and overseas finance, uh, for example, when a government is borrowing money to, to fund infrastructure projects. Well, several sub-Saharan African countries are making significant progress in developing their financial markets, but in many nations, uh, that's not the case. If you look at this chart, this is taken from a 2019 survey of African financial markets. Most of the major African countries now have a stock market, an equities market on the left-hand side. Angola and Ethiopia, uh, two countries that are uh, behind the curve in that respect. All, all countries now have a bond market and a capital market where companies and governments can issue bonds. Um, not many countries have a market where you can engage in foreign exchange swaps and currencies futures uh, and climate-aligned bonds uh, and exchange-traded funds. So these are the kind of complex financial transactions that you typically associate with advanced high-income countries. For the moment, it's important to recognise that the role that equity and bond markets and basic money markets for savings and loans can, can play in developing financial capability and develop, promoting growth and development. Ultimately, uh, the, the, the financial system depends on having people's, people whose income is going up, whose capita income is rising, and where extreme poverty is falling. Uh, at the moment, uh, that is the major factor holding back financial markets in developing countries.